hello everyone. Uh, as uh, Carsten said, I'm a physics teacher at uh, Swiss uh, High School, and I guess for the uh, program, this means that we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, after this uh, highly sophisticated and technical talk, um, I'm going to present you uh, a few examples of uh, questions that I've created with Moodle formulas and uh, JSX graph. And um, I guess the, I, I didn't know what to expect the audience could be, a, seems like a very distinguished audience of developers and uh, highly skilled people. Um, uh, so I assume that everybody has some basic knowledge and uh, my talk was basically aimed at uh, people interested in uh, starting to work with JSX graph and uh, I will present some examples and uh, discuss the merits for students and uh, point out which kinds of small things I had to figure out in JSX graph in order to accomplish what I wanted to do with the tasks. Um, as I'm basically showing examples, I think it would make sense for you to interrupt me at any point uh, if you have questions or comments. So uh, I've switched off uh, the chat. So maybe Carsten, if you agree, you could maybe uh, point out to me uh, if there is a, a, a comments in the chat. Otherwise, yes, people can course. just shout out. Sorry? Of course. of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, great. <clears throat> so let's dive right in. I've prepared a couple of examples uh, as uh, questions, and then I'm going to show you an, uh, uh, a simulation that I've recently programmed uh, for mostly illustrative purposes. So very basic, uh, a very basic question is uh, the first one where I place a JSX graph into the question text of Moodle where um, uh, uh, students could in theory manipulate the, the, the diagram, but here I've uh, disabled that. But this is uh, not then part of where they place their solution, but rather they enter solution in the, in the boxes below. So what uh, are they uh, supposed to do here? They are supposed to interpret uh, position versus time graphs and uh, assign uh, relational operators to the parameters. So here, for example, for the blue curve, they see that this uh, body uh, obviously rested and the starting position is below zero. The uh, velocity is zero and the velocity doesn't change. So the acceleration is also zero. <clears throat> this is a somewhat more qualitative uh, um, task, but as Aluna pointed out, students often have uh, actual problems with understanding the meaning of a graph. And here, this is where they can practice that. Uh, <clears throat> full responses are, of course, like that. And now I want to go to the code and highlight some things. So uh, I wanted my graphs actually to uh, look very similar to what the students see in my script and I write the script in LaTeX so I'm glad that I can actually include axis labels and point labels uh, using MathJax. So as a template for all my diagrams I um, uh, show axes, show them with labels and here you can see the label of the x-axis which is encoded uh, with uh, LaTeX um, and then some of the options for the axis are uh, zooming, panning, copyright and navigation. And uh, most of the time I just disable everything such that when students work on their uh, touch devices, they don't accidentally uh, move the, the whole axis away. And then second or third thing I wanna point out here concerning JSX graph is uh, the drawing of functions. And this is uh, uh, 
Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong uh, here. <clears throat> this is easily done by creating a function graph object and uh, placing a function as a parameter. And then one can uh, basically use uh, standard mathematical operations to work in here. Notice that parameters like these are directly imported uh, from formulas. So in the formulas uh, or among the formulas variables, there is one that is called SXB. And by putting it into curly brackets, I can just import a parameter. Okay. Next example. <clears throat> Here I show the blue line, which is supposed to represent some accelerated motion of a particle. And uh, the students are supposed to match the red line exactly uh, with the blue line. And by doing that, they uh, should get a feeling of how these parameters uh, actually work in conjunction with the, with the graph. So how does changing a parameter change the look of a graph? And uh, if they do it correctly, they are able to exactly put the red line above the blue line here. What I've done to uh, create this problem set, uh, problem is uh, I introduced uh, sliders. They're here. Uh, I actually put them on a, on a separate board so that they don't obstruct uh, graphs in case the blue line uh, goes in a completely different area of the first graph. So um, I, I create slider objects uh, with uh, uh, positions and uh, minimal, maximal, and starting value. And then I use the value of these um, sliders to draw the red curve. So the blue line basically depends on fixed parameters and the red line uses the slider X uh, value in order to uh, calculate the, the values for the graph. That is that. So we've got sliders here, adjustable parameters. And now this whole graph, of course, uh, uh, expects the students to give some input and that input is evaluated in formulas. So one has to bind um, variables in uh, the JS X graph object to the formulas uh, uh, solution or answer. And this is done by using question bind input. And then you can have a list of uh, different inputs. And this, uh, I think, is an ad hoc uh, assignment. And basically, uh, the first value that is handed over to formulas is the slider x value, and then the second is slider v, and the third is slider a. And then in formulas, one can actually work on that and evaluate whether the students uh, answered correctly. All right. <clears throat> So the third example, ah, sorry, there came something uh, via the chat. Am I supposed to answer that? No. Ah, no. no, okay, there were comments uh, from the previous speaker, okay. Uh, so uh, another example from kinematics. Um, the question here is that I describe motion uh, by giving the velocity over a certain time interval. And the students are supposed to uh, create graphs that match that described motion. And um, so from their perspective, they learn uh, and practice uh, translating from one representation, namely the textual one into a graphical one. And uh, if I do this here, I uh, look at the first segment of this motion, see that it is four seconds long. I move this 
first uh, point and maybe just to not get confused and move the other ones over as well and move it to the correct velocity of minus 2.1 meters per second and uh, this basically sets two things first the uh, time of this uh, or the, the end time of this first segment and then also the velocity itself and now the student has to calculate the displacement that uh, comes from uh, moving at minus 2.1 meters per second for four seconds. This means the displacement is minus 8.4 meters. And now with this given um, starting position of 2.8, uh, the student is supposed to move this point down to, let's see, what is that? Uh, 6, 5.6, I think, minus 5.6. And then do the same with the other ones. So this is what the student is supposed to do. It's quite a sophisticated task and it, it's great to basically allow the student to um, either explore this or practice this until uh, he is uh, totally satisfied because it's a quite complex question. It really helps to do that over and over again with different uh, values. So where I correct? Uh, for the correct responses. Yeah, I guess I was correct with that. <clears throat> I loved when I was able actually to get this to work. And how I did that is I created two boards. Um, so I, I think this uh, how this is done changed over time a little bit, but uh, Andreas or Alfred helped me quite a bit with that. Uh, so basically I pass a list of axes or of, yeah, I don't know how I call it, well, boards basically to the init boards function. And um, now one more thing that you might have noticed is that when I move a point in the right-hand diagram, uh, the corresponding, corresponding point in the left-hand diagram also moves. So this is done via uh, JavaScript triggers. Uh, let me look for that in the code. Uh, where did I put that? Uh, yeah, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry, to keep up with uh, switching source codes as well. Uh, here you can see these dependencies. So I've created points, points for velocities and points for positions. And um, basically PV1 on, uh, is a function call that is triggered when PV1 is moved and in this case dragged. And when that happens, I can run a JavaScript function. And here I use this to move the point PX1 to certain coordinates. So uh, what I wanted to achieve was that the left-hand point moves uh, to the same time. So what I do is I leave the point px1 as at its y value and change the x value to the new x value of pv1. Uh -huh. I find these uh, triggers really helpful to bind things. I mean, there's another alternative. One uh, could try to work with lines and uh, gliders, but I find this uh, a little bit more flexible, really helpful. Okay, on to the fourth example. <clears throat> this uh, doesn't use diagrams, but basically uh, just a, an open sketch. And here my goal was to teach the students uh, or, or uh, how to think about changing frames of reference. And uh, well, okay, it could be anything, but here I talk about birds flying eastward or westward and um, the five birds have their uh, certain velocity indicated by a velocity vector. And uh, then I uh, come up with a random uh, uh, letter, A, B, C, D, or E. And this means now the students have to translate um, the velocities in one reference frame to the velocity in another reference frame. Now, 
this is supposed to be the reference frame of bird C, so it'll rest. And uh, if you look, for example, at bird E, which used to fly uh, westward with uh, minus six meters per second, uh, in the reference frame of bird C, it actually moves right uh, or eastward um, with uh, plus nine meters per second. So this is how, uh, or what the student is supposed to do. And the solution then looks like this. C rests in its own reference frame and the others get a velocity that is uh, basically the sum or, or the, the difference between it, their own and C's velocity. I find this really helpful because this helps students visualize and practice uh, uh, the uh, uh, relativity of velocity. And on the technical side, I wanted to create arrows with a label that shows their magnitude. So how is this done? This you can find here. Uh, first of all, I loop over all velocities. So I created arrays of uh, for for the points and for the points themselves and the velocities. And here in this uh, point, I write to the uh, name uh, option a function of, and a, a function that returns the difference between its end and starting point in the x direction. So I created it such that this gives the velocity and basically uh, make that a string and uh, add the unit. Okay. <clears throat> the fifth example is an example from uh, electrostatics. It's also quite an uh, evolved uh, uh, or, or difficult task for the students. The situation is that uh, there are three particles placed at these positions with uh, some given charges. And uh, at the origin, there's supposed to be a test charge. And the question is, how does the Coulomb force vector look on that test charge? And from the student point of view, uh, they have to do quite a bit of thinking here. So I tell them in the text that one unit along a coordinate axis equals the Coulomb force that uh, would act upon little q if there was only q1 present and had a charge of plus one micro coulomb. So now the student has to uh, figure out quite a few things. In this case, first of all, the charge is threefold. Uh, so the Coulomb force is threefold uh, or the, 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 the contribution to the Coulomb force on Q uh, from Q1 is threefold. It's uh, detracting uh, or repelling. And so if I just, to keep it in my mind, draw the contribution of Q1, it would look like this. And now I have to go through all the others as well. And basically, uh, see here that the distance is halved and the uh, uh, charge twice as much as the comparison charge. And here, uh, basically, yeah, similar to what I've done to Q, uh, uh, with Q1. So this is quite elaborate and uh, students have to do a lot of thinking. And this is why I think this is a worthwhile problem to uh, allow them to practice as long as they need to. Uh, an answer here would look like this. And what I've done here uh, in terms of um, styling is that I uh, color these points according to whether the sign is negative or positive. So if we start this again, there should be a change. Okay, now they're all positive. This helps with the visualization and uh, determining whether uh, the test charge is actually attracted or repelled. And this is just a small thing. So what I've done is in the 
parameters list. So I, here I define uh, basically a function that returns a parameters list. And I do that when I want to reuse parameters over and over again with just some small adjustments. So here I uh, create the function attributes for a big Q charge. And depending on its on the sign of the uh, charge value, I assign uh, a different color and then um, hand that over to fill color and stroke color. And I adjust the size according to basically the, the magnitude of the charge. So the bigger the uh, magnitude of the charge, the bigger the size of the point. Uh, so this function here that I define basically up here is then used as an attribute for a point down here, attribute charge big Q. This is handed over the name of that uh, point as well as the value for, uh, of the charge that uh, is handed over from formulas. Okay. So the last example that I would like to show you is uh, uh, actually nothing in formulas, but uh, a simulation. And uh, it's supposed to illustrate circular motion. So when you start the simulation, uh, a dot just moves <laughs> on a circle and one can change um, the orbital parameters like the radius of the orbit, the fixed frequency. So when I increase the frequency, it should go faster uh, and or the mass. And the student can then switch on and off the vectors. And uh, very importantly, basically see how changing a parameter affects the value of the, of the vector. So if it goes faster, the velocity vector gets longer and the value that is calculated internally is also displayed here. And acceleration vector and force vector always point towards the center of the motion. And then one thing that uh, is quite easy to understand for the teacher and sometimes not so uh, easy for students is to see that um, none of the kinematics is affected by changing the mass. It's only the force that, uh, or the required force that uh, is affected by changing mass. So here I want to point out how I've done it. Uh, I don't know whether that is the smartest way, um, let me just point out, um, yeah, how I realized this thing because it's an infinite motion and I want to be able to change parameters in real time and not have any glitches in the motion. So I thought, okay, I uh, basically have time constantly running and um, um, this is done by basically starting at time T zero and uh, adding small time steps for every uh, uh, increment in time. So this basically is done by set timeout and then calling the same move forward function again at a delay of 20 milliseconds. And what happens in here is that when the run button is, uh, is um, set to true, then it runs and it stops when it doesn't. So when it runs uh, the phi value, which is the po polar angle um, is increased by the angular velocity times the time increment. And then um, this is basically just a variable that is uh, reset at every repetition. And then I update the complete board and uh, that basically puts all the elements to their new position. So how does it look, for example, for the um, blue point itself? Um, here it is. So this blue dot is uh, point P1. And um, I created with the, the coordinates being functions. And inside these functions, they use the parameters of radius and the polar angle to coordinate its position. So this is the value that is set with the slider and phi one is the polar angle that was updated in these uh, looping functions.
function. Yeah, <clears throat> I think this is uh, quite a simple way. I don't know whether it's an efficient way to always update the whole bo board, but the advantage of uh, doing it by that, I think, is that I can change uh, um, parameters and coordinates throughout the whole uh, code and not worry about uh, moving the, 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 uh, the elements all the time. Okay, so this is what I've done. This is a, a, a set of uh, my more interesting examples that I've uh, created for my students. Let me use the opportunity to uh, thank the JSX Graph developers and maintainers. Uh, I think it's a great tool that they uh, provide us with, and uh, I find them really helpful with uh, problems. And let me thank Dominic Bauer for maintaining this uh, awesome formulas plugin. All right, that brings me to the end. Uh, if I, well, I'm above time, so I guess I skip that and. Uh, just let it there uh, while we might have a discussion. <laughs>